This is possibly the biggest Micmac male segment I've ever done. Cue dramatic music. Look at that. That is incredible. So, uh, what can I say? I've got a huge amount of stuff to get through. So this video is going to be a fairly long video. I just have to move some of this stuff out of the way. The first one, I don't know where this has come from. In fact, I haven't looked up any of these things. So I don't know where they've come from. I'm just going to play it by ear, I think. Okay, so these are a whole bunch of LoRa modules. These ones came from Ellie Crow, I think, or Analog Lamb. Not sure which, but I'm sure I'll flash it up on the screen. Now these are the RA01 modules from AI Thinker. Um, there's RA01 and RA02. So as far as I can see, the only difference between them is uh, one has a spring and one doesn't. So this is uh, the RA02, absolutely tiny. Now these can theoretically go up to um, without any sort of aerial, um, or any decent aerial, these can theoretically go up to um, two kilometers. This is the reason why these are becoming extremely popular. It has to be line of sight, uh, but still, two kilometers is pretty good. So this is the, that was the RA2, um, and this is the RA1. So the, the only difference is between the two is the RA1, you get a spring, a uh, spring with it. Um, the RA2, uh, you actually have the little uh, connector for, for the aerial, um, so that's RA2, and this is the RA1, which is you don't you don't have a, a connector, you've just got a little spring. So I wanted to see the difference um, in range uh, compared to those two. Next on the list, um, once again, no idea what this one is. Okay, so these are even more Allura modules. I think these ones came from um, my affiliate called IC Station. Uh, so I wanted to try these ones out. So the first module is the uh, SX1278 uh, Laura module. So it'll be interesting to see how it uh, compares to uh, those other Laura modules I got. And uh, the other module I got was a NRF52832 Bluetooth module. So it'd be good to try this one out and put it through its paces, find a battery life and uh, the possible range we can get out of it. So next one. <clears throat> uh, I don't know what this, oh, I suspect this one is my second Orange Pi 0W that I ordered, quite, quite possibly. And yes, okay, so I ordered um, a Raspberry Pi 0W from um, Pi Hut, uh, along with the official case, uh, two of those, uh, because I have two uh, Pi Zero Ws now. So that's good. Um, I'll put that to good use. <coughs> okay, so next, next on the list is this big package. Ah, uh, okay, so this is IT'd. And I'd say this is probably my big purchase of um, Sonoff devices. I'd say. Come on, open your bugger. Why do they put so much sticky tape on these things? I don't know. So I ordered a whole bunch of these. Um, <clears throat> Basically eight uh, Sonoffs, which are really nice units. Um, if you haven't heard of them before, they they contain an ESP8266. Um, it has full well, hello, power in, power out, and the ESP8266 can control uh, power. So it's a plain on-off switch. There's no dimmer in it. Um, so that'd be great. So that's the mains in. Uh, the mains power also. Uh, it's got a little DC converter in there. Actually, let me open it up. Should be able to open it. Yeah, there we go. 
So it's a very simple circuit. The wireless chip there. Uh, oh, hey, it's fairly dodgy, isn't it? So I would have expected a bit better from IT. Uh, this small capacitor that they've sold it on just looks like a bit of an afterthought. I don't know whether they had problems with uh, their PCB layout or whether the PCB layout was incorrect, but maybe they're just getting rid of extra stock. But uh, all of the boards that I ordered from IT are all exactly the same. The other issue you can see is that the actual casing has been cracked, uh, probably due to overheating with this uh, fairly large lump of solder. Uh, I've checked all the other ones and this is the only one that has the uh, diode cracked. Uh, but the rest all have this uh, modification as well, so I don't know, you know, take it or leave it. It's, I guess it works, but I would have expected a bit more from IT. Um, so I got eight of them, because the reason being is that um, I want to be able to control uh, a lot of the lights uh, in the studio. Excellent. That's going to be fantastic. Now, this is the uh, big one I've been waiting for. Friendly Arm contacted me. Uh, about a month ago uh, and asked me if I wanted to review some of their latest boards. I said, yeah, sure. Um, and so they sent me not one or two uh, boards that I requested, uh, but they sent me a whole bucket load. So, huh, where, where can I start? Um, all right, so they've sent me, they've got, given me heat sinks, um, a case for a Neo. Um, oh, nice, PCM5102 audio hat for the uh, Neo. Um, it includes an infrared receiver. It can produce 384 kilohertz um, sampling rates uh, at 32 bits. So it's a pretty nice little, little board. Um, it'll be interesting to see what the signal to noise ratio is like. Uh, cases, yeah, case for a Neo. Uh, cables, whole bunch of cables. Um, what's this? Oh, yeah, more audio cables. Okay, so a camera, uh, USB-based camera. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, Cam 202. Uh, more heat sinks. So I actually requested a whole lot of heat sinks because uh, in my testing, I wanted to be able to test the official um, heat sink uh, to see how it goes. Uh, what's this? Oh, nice. Oh, okay, a little LCD display. So this is a, um, a standard liquid crystal display, uh, 16 by 2 uh, display. Uh, they've also provided um, a controller board which is um, USB based, uh, and you've also got some buttons as well. Uh, what else we got? Uh, more cables, more cases, more cables. Um, remote control, okay nice, uh, yep that's, <laughs> I desperately need SD cards I can tell you that, um, another remote control, um, more cables, oh, more heat sinks, okay so the <laughs> I asked for the heat sinks and they've sent me a whole, whole stack, uh, you know every single heat sink you can possibly imagine, uh, Wi-Fi, a, wifi, a USB Wi-Fi dongle, uh, What's this? Oh, another display like the other one that I opened. Um, another case. What else? Oh, more cables. Uh, more heat sinks. Okay, that's good. This is like Christmas, isn't it? Okay, so I wonder what this one is. Oh, okay. Um, LCD display. I think this one might actually be the touch. Okay, that's all right. Um, what else? I think this might be the same one. Yeah, it's a, the same. Looks like the same model. Okay, and this one. I don't know what this one is. Oh, okay. It's a big juicy display, nice. So we haven't even actually got gotten to the boards yet. Um, I know we've got a whole lot of boards. Um, all right, so we've got a NanoPi A64. What is it with boxes? Why do they make so, the 
box is so bloody hard to open. It's got two USB ports, Ethernet, HDMI, um, audio out, infrared as well, standard GPIO, USB on the go. Uh, it's also got a MIPI DSI connector <coughs> and uh, DVP uh, camera interface. Of course, it's using the all winner uh, A64, uh, 1 gig DDR3 RAM. It's got an AXP 803 PMIC. Um, and SD slot. So it doesn't have any EMMC on board. <coughs> you just have to put up with the uh, SD slot. Uh, as far as uh, comparing it to the other boards, it's it's like the big brother. So let's try the M1 Plus. I think the M1 Plus is very similar to the other one. So this is a NanoPi M1 Plus. Uh, it's got uh, Ethernet, HDMI, USB, audio out, DVP camera interface, um, AP6212, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which is a good step, and make it all standard. 8 gig uh, EMMC, got the all winner H3, uh, and then the, the RAM, DR3 RAM, which is 1 gig, uh, standard GPIO, USB on the go, um, infrared, a couple of buttons, and also onboard mic as well, SD on the back. So that's, that's quite a nice board too. So this, this one is the NanoPi Neo Air, which is a pretty tiny board. Oh, I mean, look at this, look at the size of this thing. So of course the uh, Neo Air comes with an aerial because it's Wi-Fi. It's exactly the same, except we've got a DVP camera interface, we've got the USB slot, we've got the GPI pins, further GPIOs. UART um, and it's the Wi-Fi chip S512 megs of DDR3 uh, this is 8 gigabytes of EMMC and of course the H3 chip so Friendly Arm have, have started using an, the AP6212 uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth radio uh, which is far superior to what they were using before uh, so we're not going to be getting a lot of issues uh, with that on these boards uh, so that's a nice board so it's the same size as the uh, the Neo, uh, but this one has uh, wireless, uh, but also eight gigabytes of EMMC. So it's probably the better one out of the two. Um, and lastly, oh no, second lastly. So this is the um, <coughs> NanoPi Neo. So it's not the Neo Air. This is a Neo. Okay, so this is the uh, NanoPi Neo with uh, five twelve megs of RAM. 100 megabit Ethernet, uh, USB port, um, SD slot, uh, USB on the go, and it's also used for power. Got GPIOs out here, uh, and further GPIOs, UART is the H3 now, it's not the H2 plus, uh, 512 megs of, of RAM, so it's a fairly compact board. This is a NanoPi S2. It's sort of similar size to the um, the other NanoPi 2. So the NanoPi S2 uh, has the same Wi-Fi chip as, as all the other boards. Friendly Arm is actually settling on this Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip because it's a lot more reliable, uh, especially under Linux. Um, then you've got the uh, camera interface, uh, DVP, it's not the same as Raspberry Pi, LVDS, uh, the chip they use is the S5P4418, so it's different, it's not the all winner. Um, then we've got 1 gig DDR3 RAM, 8 gig EMMC, um, got HDMI, audio out, USB, USB on the go, a sort of a reasonably standard Pi header. Um, I got also got a LCD interface on the back, um, SD card, and then oh, I think that's the other side of the um, of the memory. So um, that's a nice little compact board, slightly bigger than the the Pi Zero. <coughs> uh, so there we have it. Um, now because I've got duplicates of a lot of these boards and a lot of other a lot of other things that I won't actually use day to day. Um, I'm going to be giving away a lot of these as prizes uh, in another competition that's coming up. So stay tuned for that. But wait, before you go, 
Uh, I just went to the post office and I found a couple more packages here. I want to open this one up first because this one's actually quite a good one. Uh, this one was a Kickstarter I backed, uh, which is called the Firefly RK3399. That's a really nice SBC um, that um, is a 6 core, 64 bit um, SBC. So I also bought a heatsink with it because my tests tend to thrash out the CPU. So the USB to UART little dongle. <coughs> um, and this is the Firefly. Oh, look at that. That is some board, isn't it? Uh, so this board is uh, running the Rockchip RK3399. So it's got four Cortex-A53s and two Cortex-A72s, um, two gigs of uh, RAM, a USB 3 USB 3.0 ports, SD slots, uh, you know, infrared, boring, um, it's got audio out, um, and a sort of compatible Raspberry Pi GPO, uh, Wi-Fi Bluetooth. It's also got an M2 slot, which is really nice. Not many boards have an M2 slot. Um, it's got SPDIF, uh, HDMI, uh, Gigabit Ethernet, uh, it's got MIPI, MIPI DSi, MIPI CSi, um, it's got a PCIe interface. This board has basically got everything. Everything you'd probably want on a board, it's got everything on it. So this one will be a very interesting board to review. Oh, this will be good, can't wait to get into this one. <coughs> excellent, excellent. Good job, okay. So there's that one, Firefly. Uh, then the last one, I have no idea what this one is. I really need to get some better scissors. Cadis Vim, look at that. Uh, the Cadis Vim has finally arrived. Uh, this is another SBC I've been really looking at uh, reviewing. So the uh, Cadis Vim is using the uh, quad core Cortex A53, it's the AM Logic 905X. Um, it's kind of a nice little board too. Uh, it's got the standard sort of Pi GPIO headers there and 2 gigs DDR3 uh, RAM, 8 gig eMMC. Uh, it's using the AP6212 Broadcom um, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which is just you know the most popular thing around. Uh, HDMI 2, uh, sadly doesn't have USB 3.0, um, but it's you know, another nice little board. It's got all the basics that you'd expect for it. Uh, Real-time clock as well in the corner there. Um, SD slot, uh, Ethernet, uh, so this is another nice little board I'll be reviewing as well. Seem to be going SPC mad, aren't I? Stay tuned for all those reviews coming up. So there's a lot of stuff here that uh, Friendly Arm sent me. Uh, one thing you have to bear in mind, I made it fairly clear to Friendly Arm that uh, my reviews will still remain honest. Um, so a, a lot of the time vendors will expect uh, reviewers to be bought out. Um, so that's one thing I will certainly not do. Um, I'll still give my honest opinion uh, of, of these boards uh, and how they function. But I'll certainly be able to use a lot of these uh, boards as prizes for competition. So uh, it benefits all my subscribers and my patrons. So there we go.